part of the wood. It was, it was, uh, uh, Even when they were dining out of doors, the wealthy Edwardians took time and trouble to ensure that the very highest standards were maintained. These days, it often seems that we've hardly got time to catch our breath. And I can't help thinking that a more Edwardian approach to our leisure hours could be just the right antidote for this modern madness. Juice. The Edwardians' love of entertaining and the great outdoors all came together with a formal picnic. And I can think of no more fitting finale for my flirtation with the pleasures of the era than to host a grand Edwardian picnic of my own. I'll be recreating some classic picnic dishes, discovering how to dress up for the occasion and trying my hand at the most popular craze of the day. But first, with the help of baking gurus Rachel Mount and Carmen Tarry, I'm about to find out how to transform some simple tea time treats into a stunning centerpiece for my picnic. So I've got my lovely heart-shaped biscuit and I'm ready to decorate it. Where do I start? OK, I'm going to take some royal icing and any of these colours here. Well, I feel some my ice. eye irresistibly drawn towards the pink, the pink yes. The pink heart. Strawberry ice cream. Okay. Sort of the consistency of, of double cream. And these are just homemade, handmade bits yeah, of grease proof paper. paper. So you yeah. can anyone can knock this up at home. Yeah, and just fold them and just snip a little hole. There you go. Okay. Start at the top of the heart. Gently squeeze that. Do the outline shape. Oh now you just go swiggly, just wiggly, go, yeah, wiggly all just, over the place. Exactly. Then it'll just smoothly spread out. So that's about getting the consistency itself. of the icing right in the first place. That's right. Very good. Better than mine. <laughs> Once set firm, the pink icing is my blank canvas. Now I can get seriously arty. It's like squeezing toothpaste. You've got something more elaborate in mind, have you? Exactly. Popping these on top of the, uh, the polka dots. Mm. <laughs> oh, my ball's got stuck in. <laughs> I was thinking of a sort of harp, you know, with strings going across. Do you like lovely. that idea? Very lovely. A light dusting of edible shimmer, and my creation is complete. Great. What do you think? I think it's a little precious jewel. I think you can move up to the next school of uh, Carmen. advanced cake making. Hugh? Are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. You've moved up to cakes because your icing skills have impressed me. So have they? Lots more piping. All it is are two fairy cakes. And I've stuck them together. So all I do is pipe squiggles, squiggles. of icing. That continue. kind of thing? Yes. And then we also want to create those on our top cake as well. And royal icing dries out once it hits the air too, so you always need to keep your bags and your icing covered. But then, then it actually gets rock hard. It does, and this will set very hard. It's the egg white in this that makes ah, the icing set hard. And now we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to fill in those gaps with a different colour hue. How about chocolate? These work well in lots of different colours, quite, quite sort of bold colours together. Would the Edwardians have had such a rich palette of colours to work with? I think they would have had access to the green, and they certainly had access to reds. They had cochineal, didn't they? Yes, they did. Made from crushed beetles. Yes. <laughs> not strictly for vegetarians. No, not at all. <laughs> it's very hard to do something quite as immaculate as that, but I feel it isn't very hard to have a bit of fun and make something look yes. pretty amazing. Yeah. Pull off tiny pieces of paste and roll them in the ball yep. between your fingers. Kind of so we have a wild colour combination here, don't we? I think it's just just using your imagination as well. Well, 
Well, I'm pretty pleased with that, I must say. I think that's not bad for a beginner. I think that's very good for a beginner. You could just make another dozen of those and we'll group them together. <laughs> <laughs> the Edwardians were passionate about decoration and detail in all areas of their lives. Women were highly fashion conscious and forever on the hunt for a new look. And a good lady's maid had to be an expert at finishing touches in ribbons and lace. Such trimmings are once again a big part of the fashion scene, and I've come to one of the best collections in the country. I've never seen so many ribbons. How many have you got? About 5,000 different types. Really? Organdies, wire-edged, satins, velvet... Annabelle satins. Lewis owns Accessories Empire Vivi Rouleau and supplies both Haute Couture and the High Street. Many of her ideas are inspired by designs from the past, including a hefty dose of Edwardiana. She's in a garden and she's got a bit of everything on. She's got feathers all over her hat, lace, uh, frogging, she's even got an umbrella. Very elegant, I think. Look at this. Wow. I mean, what a wonderful... Six women and you can yeah. almost see Where that they're, they they're all sort of sizing each other up, yeah. even though this is a fashion magazine and it's an but illustration. But they've all got the same style on. Birds, whole birds. Charming. Uh, beautiful roses. Oh, look at that. A complete flower hat. Yes. Covered and adorned She's with petals. She's got a window box growing around yeah. the brim. Yeah. They're wearing feathers, trimming, revamping. So it's very much they're doing that today. But how easy are these things to make? Um, very a... simple, actually, with a wire-edged ribbon. And you would take the wire at the end and just secure that at one side. They go to the other end of the ribbon and pull the wire out. And we're going to ruche this all the way down. Ruching? What's Ruch. ruching? Well gathering really. Gather Gathered the ribbon scrunched. all the way down to the bottom. That's like already that. curling up in a sort of... Curling up beautifully. What, you can see it wants to be a flower. Yeah. Go back to the other end and then roll this, roll it round and make an ah, amazing bud. bud. Yes. And then you just go all the way around. Ah, then a little bit more loosely. And the flower is blooming. But then also it's wonderful to then get a little bit of feather and you attach it with these florist wires and when you've done this it will stay in the position you want it to mm -hmm. and then you would gutter it this is fantastic stuff called gutter because you don't want the wires showing and you twist that down and it sticks to itself like that to cover the stem so you can just build these things yeah, up build and make them as elaborate as you like yeah a little bit of this and a little bit of that that. Brilliant. And because it's wired, you can move it. Can I yes. have that for my buttonhole? That took I would you... wear that in your buttonhole or maybe a lady in her hair, I think. Looks rather dandy. Can I um, have a go at making one of these? Have a go. A slightly different colour here. Your time starts now. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> You'll make me panic. So, uh, just, just pulling just, it from the top That's exactly, each time. edging it down all the time. OK, until it's all quite sort of bunched up at the bottom. Is that sufficiently ruched? A bit more, no, a bit more, wee bit bit more. more. That's it. Okay, so go okay. to the other end of the ribbon where you first started. Right. And you roll, roll, roll. Roll, roll, roll. roll. Then you it's just good, my bun, fold isn't it? it round. What, like bud, that? Yes, but not too tight, so, so it's loosely. A bit more loosely? Yeah. Hey, it's starting to look quite flowery already. So now three minutes, you have ten seconds left. <laughs> Keep going round. Do you think I've done it a little bit too tight? Well, although it's a bit squashed, <laughs> it's quite pretty. Let's face it. It's not opened, it hasn't had any sun. It just like needs a couple of weather. sunny days and mm, it'll, it'll be as yeah. good as yours. A deft flourish with a bit of velvet and a feather, and my modest rosebud is blooming marvellous. And all my own work. Can I have that one then? You can. It's a present for you. The Grand Edwardian Picnic was an elaborate display of dozens of dishes. Along with a good selection of cold meats and salads, it was de rigueur to have something fishy on the menu. So, my fresh mackerel and some Morecambe Bay shrimps are going to be transformed, with the help of food historian Ivan Day, by the traditional culinary art of potting. So what have you got for me? Some, got some little ones. Shrimp pots for you. Perfect. 
I've always loved potted shrimps, but I don't think I've had anything else potted, but it used to be a hugely popular way of preparing food. Whole chapters in cookery books in the late 19th, early 20th century devoted to potting. Venison, beef, some specialist regional fishes like char from the Lake District. Everybody wanted it, but you couldn't get it fresh in the south, so the only way you could have it was potted, preserved in butter, put on the train, sent down. The same with Morecambe Bay shrimps. And from a culinary point of view, what, what does potting do for a dish? Well, it's a bit like wine. It matures the food. It's embedded in butter and it's got spices in it. And if you leave it in the cold larder for two or three months, and this is what they actually did, was the preserving method, it really enhances the flavour. What we're going to do is make something called caviac, which is the old name for potted mackerel. And we're going to make little sort of stratified layers of mackerel fillets. Right. And I'm going to, first of all, grate some nutmeg. I'm going to scrape it rather than grating it with a knife, which is the old-fashioned chefy way of doing it. And nice sea salt here. Not too much. Pepper. You know, pepper and nutmeg will, will help to keep the bacteria off. So that's our first layer. I'm just going to build that up quite loosely because we want a little bit of room in there for the butter to flow in. A, a nice addition, really, would be to put a bay leaf in the middle there. It's fabulous with fish, bay leaf, isn't it? Oh, it's a lovely, lovely combination. The most important thing is to use clarified butter. I'm just going to put a little bit on, just lubricate it. So for the cooking part of it, that's all you need? That's all we need. Put the lid on, and that's ready to go in the oven for about half an hour. And now for my shrimps. They're tossed in butter that's been clarified by straining off the milky solids, and then seasoned with mace, cayenne, nutmeg and black pepper. Then they're placed in pots and topped up with enough clarified butter to completely cover them. I'm just going to duck him under. OK, let's have a look at your mackerel. Right, well, it's still pretty hot, but what I'm going to do is to drain all of that gravy out. And it's the gravy that, that will actually make it go off, so we've got to get rid of some of that. And that's going to be great to have with some toast, you know. And then, just like you did, fill the whole thing up with clarified butter. So th this is going to be pretty good picnic food, really, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely perfect, because you could take it on a train journey, you could stick it in a hamper and put it on the back of your bicycle. Um, it's really portable, so that's perfect. Of course, you won't see the fish or the shrimps when it's completely set. So, so you'll you really crack open that lovely golden crust of set butter and all the juicy fish not, will be not inside. For a day or two. Eat it at its best in maybe a week. While our pots are left in a cool place mm. to set, we've got delicious chef's perks to enjoy. Oh, mm, that's good. It's really good, isn't it? Well, that's mackerel oil and butter and a bit of juice, and I can taste those spices. I can taste the nutmeg yeah. and the bay. Mmm, delicious. In the early 1900s, outdoor pursuits and pastimes like cycling, roller skating and archery became popular with both men and women. Then in 1907, a new craze took off. A cross between juggling and the yo-yo, Diabolo became a huge hit with both young and old alike. Apparently, someone of average coordination can learn the basic skills for Diabolo in just a few minutes. So I'm not quite sure where that leaves me, but I'm about to find out. Sam. Hi. I'm ready for my lesson. Sam Vale is a juggler who also teaches Diabolo. OK, first of all, uh, we'll just put this on the floor. And um, we just hold both hand sticks. Yep. We're going to start it spinning by rolling it along the floor slightly. Now, uh, I'm going to help you, so if you just let your arms go loose... OK, OK. ..and I'll do the work for you. OK, and just relax your arms. Ah, uh, okay. OK. Now, you notice my right hand or your right hand is doing all the work and the left hand is just moving in sympathy ah, with that. I seem to be quite good at this already. Yeah, excellent. You're, doing, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Go. I'm not ready <laughs> to take off my trailer wheels. OK, well, in a moment, I'm going to have to let go and let you take over on your own. So I'm kind of there imparting the spin with the right hand. Absolutely. Ooh. Still there. That's good. Yeah, yep, you're doing fine. Not, not too much, otherwise you'll bounce it off the string. I feel there's too much spare string flying around for, okay. for my comfort, but... Do you want to it's... try a trick? I'm ready to try a trick already. Go on, then. Watch well, you might as well. Um, if you just uh, straighten the string very, 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 very suddenly, uh, it should spring into the ah! air. 
sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in a well, straight line. That was quite dramatic, wasn't it? That was very dramatic. That's good. OK, well, I was actually... I'll, I'll demonstrate what I was trying to get you to do there. So it's quite unfair of me to uh, not show you. Get it spinning like so. And when it's in the air, keep the string straight, point your right hand towards the Diablo and catch it back on the string. OK, do yeah. you want to have another go? Yep. It's still spinning. I can just... OK, do you want to try throwing and catching it again? I will. I'll go for it. OK. Yes. Hey, hey, how about that? Brilliant. Wow. These rubber Diablo look quite yeah. sort of high-tech and funky. Are they very different from the ones the Edwardians would have used? Oh, yeah, totally different. I mean, this, this is made out of uh, soft plastic with an aluminium axle. Um, Edwardian Diablos were, uh, were more like this. You see, that's just uh, basically a solid block of wood, making it actually a lot more difficult to use. And where did the name Diablo come from? Uh, Diablo, it's, it's often misassociated with uh, Diablo, the Spanish word for devil, when in fact it's actually from classical Greek, and uh, the correct word is uh, diabolo, which means to throw across. OK, Sam, so just what kind of groovy things can you do with these? Oh, well, if you throw it to me, I can show you. You ready? Yep. <laughs> you got it. Well done. Very nice. So do you have a grand finale? OK, a grand finale. <laughs> grand enough very for you? Good. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. There's one last dish without which no Edwardian picnic would be complete. A raised pie. Mine's going to be a classic pork pie, flavoured with sage and thyme. To make the special pastry, called a hot water crust, place some lard, butter and water in a saucepan and heat until the fats have completely melted. Mix a beaten egg into plain flour, sifted with a pinch of salt, and then pour in the hot liquid. Bring it all together, then knead it till you have a stiff dough. It should then be chilled for about half an hour. Save a quarter of the dough for the lid, then roll out the rest of the pastry to a thickness of a good half centimetre. Use it to line a high-sided springform cake tin, pressing it up the sides. The filling of the pie is made from finely diced shoulder of pork Roughly chopped, smoked, streaky bacon, sage, thyme and plenty of salt and pepper. A little beaten egg is brushed on to help seal the lid, which is laid over the filling, and the edges of the pie are carefully crimped to make a tight seal around the rim. For an extra decorative flourish, I'm adding an elegant pastry ER for Edward Rex. A final brush with beaten egg will produce a lovely glaze. The pie is baked in a moderate oven for about two hours. As the pie cooks, the meat shrinks slightly, creating a gap inside the pastry. This is traditionally filled with a rich stock made from pork bones and pig's trotters. It'll set into a firm jelly when the pie is cold. And that's the perfect portable picnic food. The venue for my Edwardian picnic is Spring Cottage on the Cliveden Estate beside the River Thames. For over a hundred years, visitors from Edward VII himself to Christine Keeler have enjoyed fun and frolics here. My biscuit and cake decorating tutors, Rachel and Carmen, have arrived a little early with a bit of a surprise. I can't believe what you two have been up to. This is just astonishing. Do you like our biscuit tree, Hugh? It's a biscuit tree. Weeping, weeping willow biscuit tree. Yeah. Very appropriate by the riverside. With the kingfisher. Fantastic. I think even the most hardened Edwardian heathenist would have been blown away by this. I think so. Can I just nibble a leaf? Just, I just want to make sure that it really is edible. 
Mm. Tastes like icing. <laughs> Amazingly. Good guess. And the cakes are incredible as well. Do you think we can encourage my guests to actually finish it off by the end of the day and eat it all? Oh, I think we could. I'm serving up a favourite summer drink of the time, a pretty lethal concoction of champagne, brandy, orange curacao and soda water. Hi. Hi. Who's Hi. ready for a drink? Me. <laughs> Patricia. There we go. All my fellow Neo-Edwardians are here, including rhubarb growers Janet and Neil. There's no rhubarb in this drink. Do you still want some? Yes, I'll try some. How are you? Fine, thank you. There you go. You're giving us a bad example of this alcohol you keep having with us. <laughs> Simon. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? Lovely to see you. And you? Are you and ready you? for a drink? Of course. This is champagne cup. Golly. Looks innocent. Cheers. <laughs> OK, I need some volunteers because it's not going to rain. So let's bring the tables out into the garden and make it a proper picnic. Just pull them back to here. Some very dependable people with very steady hands. Uh, I think we'll go through this way. Oh, mind your bottoms. OK. Now we are picnicking. and then shuffle the flick. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Fantastic. <laughs> the mackerel finding its way round. Love potted shrimp. Lots of maize. Yeah, lots of maize. Yeah, me. That's a button the shrimp attached. Tomato. What's what's what the uh, olives? Is green olives. Green olives. Yeah. Patricia. Have some pie. Yes. Tallulah. Jelly is the best. Bit. Jelly is the best. Bit. The best bit. Thank you. Thank you. For pudding, yet another Edwardian classic, pavlova. And of course, our gorgeous cakes and biscuits. Yes, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Very that's good. That's the third one, and definitely have to eat them off each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you talking? OK, who's first? <laughs> do you know, everybody here has just taught me how to do something incredible, and I just want to give everybody a little present. This is for a boy. That'll go in your buttonhole. Very much. This is for a girl, and it'll go in your hair. It's got a clip on it. Patricia. To Lula, this seems to have your name written on it. And for Sam. Thank you. don't have a buttonhole. I have a feeling this is Rachel's colouring. Monty, a little bit of a flourish for you. Now I feel complete. Does it clash with my biscuit? No, you're fine. Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. And sadly, that's the end of my formal flirtation with the Edwardian lifestyle. But I like to think a little bit of the era's delicious decadence will be staying with me. Get in a gondola, and a gondola these days will only ride.